In this video, we're going to take a look at image planes. Image planes allow us to bring in a background image to serve as an environment, a background, or possibly reference. To create the image plane, we'll go to Create and choose Free Image Plane. This will generate the image plane node for which we can then load our texture or image to it. To load the image, I'll use the attribute editor and go to image name and choose the folder to browse for my image. Here, I'm going to load a background reference image for modeling a crow. So here we have a drawing that we can now bring in as our image plane and see it in multiple views. This will allow us to trace over this image in order to build the model that we want. Currently, I'm using a JPEG image. We can load other types of images that are accepted by Maya, such as a TIFF, a Targa, or even a PNG. The free image plane allows us to move the image anywhere we want within our 3D space. I'm going to switch back over to the channel box and then reselect the image plane so that I am now selecting the transform node and not just the shape node. I can then hit W and then move that image plane anywhere I need to. Now you'll notice that if we move the image plane, we will not get any type of distortion in our orthographic views. So as I move it forward and backward, we will not notice any distance change within the image itself. We can restrict the image so that we can only see it in a specific viewport by going through the attribute editor. And at the very top, we can change, instead of using all views, we can set it to looking through a camera and choose the camera that we want. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And I'm gonna get rid of it out of the perspective view and place it in the front view. And now I have my reference material in my front viewport, and I'm going to slide this down just a little bit, just so that the image appears to sit on top of the XZ plane there, or at least the picture of our crow looks like it's sitting on top of the XZ plane. And then I can use this as a front view, again, to model from. We can load up multiple image planes. We'll create another one. And I will attach the same image to it. We'll go down to image name, use our browser, and just double click the image to load that. And this time, we're going to set it looking through camera, but now I'm going to set it to the side view. And we'll move it so that it shows the bottom half of our image, and we're just rotating this around. And I want to move it up so that the side view of the crow is level in my side view camera on top of that XZ plane. I'll switch back over to the channel box and we'll just round this number out here. We'll just type in 90 and hit enter. And then we'll use W and translate that up. And our goal here is to align it to the front view so that the features line up in both viewports. Now, when I model, I can make changes in the front view that should correspond to my side view. Now, in this particular case, when we're using a drawing, the image plane will line up pretty well because there's no distortion in the drawing itself. If we were using a photograph, we'll get camera distortion due to the lens that the photograph was taken with. In that case, we just kind of accept it and we'll pick a view that works best for us and improvise with our other views as we model. Now, when placing our image planes, we'll often push them back in the particular view that they're in, since it's not going to alter the image at all by doing so, so that the image plane is not sitting within our geometry. So if I were to create a primitive object, and if I were to select my side view camera here, and grab that image plane and pull it forward, you'll see that the image plane will penetrate through the model. This can make it rather difficult to see our geometry. So we can just push that back so that it will not interfere with anything that we're working on. We can also, if we go down into the shape node, we can change the alpha gain of the image itself. 
This will cause the image to be semi-transparent. Now if I move that image back up, we'll see that it still penetrates, but we can see through the image plane itself. Again, not ideal, so I'll undo that and we'll leave that in the back, but I'll also leave a little bit of transparency on there so that it blends in with the background, just making it a bit more pleasing to look at. Now we can also scale our image planes. The image will go along with it. We always want to try to uniformly scale those images so that we do not put any distortion in the image itself. So if I were to scale it just in the X axis, we would be distorting our reference image. So we can grab it in the center and scale that up uniformly. If we no longer need the image, we can simply select it and choose delete on the keyboard, just as we would with any other node. And at any point in time, if we want to change or alter the image, we can simply reload the image here by just browsing for another picture.